All right, guys, welcome back to Newbie Productions Virtual Fundraiser. I'm your host, as always, Amari Gaston. Today, we have a special guest. His name is Christopher Sani. Hey, hey, what's going on, world? All right, so off the rip, you just graduated from Bridgewater State University. How's it feel, even though it uh, ended bad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am proud to say that I am the, probably the first person in my family to graduate during a pandemic. Congratulations, so congratulations. Props to me. Um, <laughs> other than that, um, it's been pretty good. I've been using this time to really just uh, focusing on the things that I like in the filmmaking process, such as writing. I've been writing a lot of spec scripts and stuff, um, and also doing monologues here and there, practicing on acting. So yeah, it's just really me honing in on these skills that I learned in college and really just applying it for myself to get ready for the future. Okay, cool, cool. All right, let's get into the first question. Like, how did you get involved with Newbie Productions? How did oh, you meet him? How did you meet him? <laughs> The man, the myth, the so, legend. So, um, back at Bridgewater State, um, going into my senior year, I met with, I call her my second mother, because um, she is, and she's probably a second mother to a lot of people, but mm -hmm. Sydney Marrow from uh, the CMA at Bridgewater State, she's the director, and I was in a meeting with her, and she was talking, we were just having one of our powwows and stuff, we just talk about everything and anything, so she actually was like, yeah, I have someone that I want you to meet, did a documentary. Um, the documentary she was referring to was Protect... Care and Serve. Care and Serve, yeah, I was looking for it. I'm like, <laughs> Protect, Care and Serve. And I was like, yeah, I would love to meet him and stuff. So she gave me his number, texted him. Like within 20 minutes, he responded back saying, let's grab breakfast or something. And uh, we actually went to breakfast right down the street from my house. Um, and we talked for like an hour and stuff. And that was the day before the day of the award ceremony so mm -hmm. he came in regardless of that was like i'm still going to meet with you talk with you and stuff and then by the end of the conversation he was like yeah i have like this award ceremony i'm up for an emmy didn't even say that throughout the whole conversation <laughs> till the end of it and um yeah it was like wow i was just like someone from my school has gone on to do something as great as winning an award mm -hmm. like that so definitely i want to connect with him keep him in contact and stuff and he's really been giving me like a lot of mentorship advice telling me to work insanely hard mm. as much as he does probably and more <laughs> um the mama mentality and stuff that's what his yeah. mindset is so definitely having someone like him in my life has been very very influential cool what were, you, what were your like thoughts on rato when you first met him like your first impression oh i thought he was crazy <laughs> <laughs> no i thought he was a cool dude and stuff but the way like he honestly made me feel like I needed to do more in terms of everything that I was working on just by his worth ethic, ethic and stuff. So yeah, I was like, wow, here's someone like, he's like, yeah, you wanna get to here? This is how much you have to work. I'm literally telling you what I'm doing to get to mm -hmm. this point. Now, if you wanna get to this point, cool, but it's up to you. So it's up to you to decide whether or not you make it here. So speaking with him on that, and I was like, wow, so I really need to, dig my toes in and heels and whatever and just make this quarantine worth it yeah cool all right next question how knowing that newbie's coming up with the next project yeah yeah um i am you about immigration how are you feeling about that you excited for it yeah good just because it's a story that is very relevant in this day and age and that mm -hmm. people need to see and needs to be told again and again so uh the biggest thing is having these conversations with people like the last uh, documentary he did it opened up a lot of discussion especially on campus like i was able to talk to uh, police officers on campus about their policies and stuff um yeah i actually got to go have a sit down dinner with them and whatnot and after watching the film i was able to base my conversation off of that talking about their policies why they have two cop cars um when they're uh, pulling someone over on Spring Street, uh, <laughs> the different tactics that they use, is there any discrimination and stuff? And uh, they really kept an honest conversation with me. Um, we tried to talk about a little bit about the race stuff, what was going on in the world. And the biggest thing I remember the chief saying to me was he didn't want someone ever dying again on the campus because he experienced that once and he was like, it was absolutely terrible. So then it got me in the mindset of like, okay, so they're not, as much as we see on the news and stuff, there are actually some police officers that really care about the, and community the media won't show us that. don't want bad stuff to happen and the media doesn't show us that. Yeah. 
I thought it's, it's, I think that's crazy because mm-hmm. a lot of people like think like once they have one bad interaction with the police officer mm-hmm. and like that sets the tone for every single one and there's good great ones yeah like don't get me wrong they're definitely odd this the media picks and chooses what they want to show whether yeah. they're further story or just oh we know that happened but we don't need to talk about that precisely so I think that's messed up so precisely but I got one last question yes, this yes. one's gonna be for like newbie so you gotta give him a tip like I know you're a big fashion guy so how can you help <laughs> advance his fashion game because his shoe game horrible his jacket's way too sparkly and shiny and bright he just he sticks out listen, like a highlighter listen listen how do you listen, give listen, him okay, some tips okay okay he needs so help <laughs> he needs help I, I try to give him advice but he thinks he knows what he's doing but so um for my fashion choices, I like to keep it simple. But there mm. are times where I come out with that flair, whatever. Like I have a satin shirt that has like flowers over it, and I'm like, I look killer in this. <laughs> I only wear this on special occasions. Like I think I only wore it once. So I don't know, man. I feel like Nubi has like great fashion choices. I mean, that leopard, that leopard, that leopard jacket is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, yeah, know. right. Like I personally wouldn't do it. He thinks he's in the safari no, or something. No, I don't know. he has the confidence to pull it off. That's all it is with clothes. Is like. Do you have enough confidence to be able to pull this off? Like Jaden Smith, for example, um, he wore a kilt or something or like a skirt. He was just wearing it. And people were asking him, like, why are you doing it? He's like, I don't care. Like, I have enough confidence to be able to pull this off. So confidence is everything when it comes to clothes. Like, you can wear whatever you want as long as you, like, know you look good in it. <laughs> yeah, I like think it. you look good in it. So, <laughs> all right. Appreciate the advice. Rato, I hope you took that away from you. I hope you learned from that. All right? You said it. You said it, but you didn't deny it. All right. All right, guys. Christopher signing. Thank you. We'll be back with more guests later.